In this video, I'm showing you the essential Ender 3 printable upgrades and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you be more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. The Ender 3 has become pretty popular these days, so I'd like to share my thoughts with you about the most important upgrades, which are printable and cost you almost nothing, except a little bit of filament, and in one case, just a small piece of PTFE tube. Also make sure you stick around until the end of the video, because I'm giving away an Ender 3 or an Anit A8 by the end of July 2019. Let's begin with a little story about a project that I've recently started this 3D printed teleprompter. Now, this is a 14 hour print, even after several rounds of optimization. My first print on the Anit A8 was successful, but I needed to scale up a little bit and I switched over to print this on the Ender 3. This is the result after one hour of printing the first layers. The nozzle, more exactly the PDFE tube inside of the extruder clogged and you see that the top layer is pretty much scattered with little drops of filament and it's quite rough. This means the extruder motor had a very hard time pushing the filament through the nozzle and the PTFE tube, which led to this fatal premature end of the print. Why would this happen in the first place? Let's have a look at how the Ender 3 Bowden extruder works and what parts are coming together at the hot end. First, we have the extruder motor here, pushing the filament into the PTFE tube, which then leads to the hot end, where it goes into this Bowden fitting and then into the throat of the nozzle. Now, watch close what happens to the PTFE tube when the extruder is being pushed along the x-axis like this. To see this, I have marked the PTFE tube with black marker. You see that the PTFE tube turns either in one or the other direction. Now, this is unavoidable because of how this whole Bowden extruder is set up and placed, but what are the consequences? Now, because of the constant movement of the PTFE tube in this fitting, it can slowly start to move up over time. And then if you have a lot of movement and also a lot of retractions of the filament happening during the print, it can happen that half fluid filament gets up to the spot that has just opened between the throat and the PTFE tube and squeeze into that opening as soon as the extruder motor starts pushing filament into the extruder again. And this leads to a clock above the throat and inside of the PTFE tube end. And this issue is easily fixed by the most important and simple upgrade that you should install at day one when you get this printer. Really, this little piece of plastic has helped me the most to get reliable prints from this printer, especially when printing for an extended amount of time like 10 plus hours. Now let's have a look what this upgrade does inside of the extruder. The PTFE tube will be cut and a little piece of plastic is inserted on top of the PTFE tube. That part stays inside of the extruder. It's now independent from the upper part and then the lower part of the PTFT tube is being pushed down by the fitting to keep it inside of the extruder and pushed against the throat of the nozzle. If that upper PTFE tube now moves or even loosens a bit and moves up a little, it's not an issue because the insert pushes still down that lower PTFE tube. Problem solved? The second upgrade is also regarding this PTFE fitting issue to prevent the upper PTFE tube from coming out. So how is this done? The PTFE insert has a little ring that you can push down to release the tube and pull it out. So this ring moves up and down when the extruder does extract the filament. And this can lead to the PTFE tube coming out of that fitting even faster over time. To prevent this, you can print out a little spacer clip that is inserted between the ring and the fitting to prevent the ring from releasing the PTFE tube. So these two upgrades alone can already improve massively your long-term printing reliability of the Ender 3. So make sure you start with those and then tackle the rest of the issues. Next, we're gonna take care of the basics of cable management. Sooner or later, you will start printing taller things, not just small benches, but really large prints that also make your set axis move up much more. Without doing some minimal cable management, 
you could run into the issue that the cables that run from the extruder to the electronics case will interfere with the cables that run from the heat bed to the electronics case. And in the worst case, these cables can cross and block the heat bed or the X and Z axis from moving. And so it will ruin your print. So this is especially bad if you're already printing the upper part of a larger print and this has been already going for many hours. I recommend that you route the extruder cables to the left using this upgrade cable holder that is mounted to the Z-axis motor. It will hold the cables to the left and prevent them from crossing with the heat bed cable. Another issue fixed, again more reliability. Now let's have a look how the filament is routed into the extruder in the first place. If you look at how the default setup of the filament spool feeds the filament into the extruder, you notice that the way how the extruder pulls down the filament from the top spool, there can be a pretty small bending radius of the filament, so it rubs again the plastic parts of the extruder and could cause that plastic to wear over time. Additionally, the filament runs very close to the Z-axis lead screw and so can rub against the lead screw resulting in filament dust landing in the lead screw and potentially blocking the lead screw from moving. This little upgrade just needs a small piece of PTFE tube that normally costs less than one dollar per meter and it helps guide the filament away from the lead screw and with a much better bending radius from the filament spool. Additionally you can also print this filament guide that helps even more to guide the filament down to the extruder in a much better angle. Now let's talk about the cooling duct. From my experience, the standard cooling duct that comes with the printer is okayish, but the airflow could be more directly pointed at the printed parts and so cool down the hotspot even faster. Therefore, I added the Mistral exterior cooling duct to the list of upgrades. It's a simple swap out upgrade of the default cooling duct, releasing two screws and putting the new cooling duct on again. The next upgrade tackles a small but potentially critical problem, especially if you use this printer for a lot of prints with overhangs and retractions when there could be stringing happening. What could potentially be dangerous about these little plastic parts? When they fall down from the nozzle or from the printed part, they usually get blown to the left by the cooling duct and then will fall from the heat bed. They mostly will land on the left hand side of the electronics case, but some of those filament strings are really thin and lightweight. If the cooling fan of the electronics case is sucking in those parts, the fan can get stuck over time and this could lead to the electronics to overheat. You might be wondering, for example, why you suddenly get layer shifting and it could be because of the stepper drivers getting overheated as the electronics case fan has failed. So let's apply a cover for the fan that reroutes the airflow so it gets taken in from the front of the electronics case which is not prone to small filament strings falling down to. My last recommendation is to print out a fan silencer for the power supply fan. It can get really loud and the silencer is pretty effective in reducing that noise. Unfortunately, the extruder fans are still pretty loud because they seem to be very cheap and cause constant noise from vibrations. I think the only way to fix this noise is to buy more expensive fans that are much better balanced and have ball bearings. By applying all these upgrades you will be sleeping better when printing and definitely get better results more reliable. Links to all the Thingiverse parts and a collection of my favorite Ender 3 upgrades are in the description down below. Please leave a comment what your favorite upgrade for the Ender 3 is to share what works best for you. Now let's come to the giveaway part. I'm giving away either an Ender 3 or an Enid A8 3D printer by the end of July 2019. It's not sponsored by anyone but myself. If you win, you can decide which printer you want. To enter the giveaway, please leave a comment in the comment section down below why you want one of these printers and what you are going to create with it. I will go through all the comments of this video and also all videos that I release until the end of July 2019 and I'm going to pick a winner. Leave your Twitter or Instagram alias so I can contact you directly and I'm going to announce the winner in the first video in August 2019. If you think this video was helpful, like and subscribe and if you really want to support me creating this kind of content for you, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. It's linked in the description. See you next time.